Hey, thanks for coming back and watching Lesson 1.3. We're going to be exploring real numbers today. Yes, there are numbers that we consider imaginary. That's for another course. But today we're just going to be talking about real numbers. There are lots of different numbers that are classified as real numbers. This lesson is really vocabulary intensive, so it would be a good idea to write these vocab words in your notes or maybe even make some flashcards because I want you to know what type of number is what. Our first type of number is called natural numbers. Natural numbers are numbers that you have probably known since you were about two years old. Those are the numbers used for counting. One, two, three, four, five, etc. Those are all called natural numbers. Another type of numbers that you've dealt with for a very long time are called whole numbers. Whole numbers are very similar to natural numbers. They include all the natural numbers. The only difference is that the whole numbers also include zero. So one, two, three, four, but also zero. Those are called whole numbers. Integers, you started really dealing with these last year. You've seen them before, but integers Everything that we've seen above is also an integer, like 1, 2, 3, 4, but it also includes negative numbers. Not all negative numbers, but just whole numbers and their opposites. So negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, these are all integers. So whole numbers and their opposites. Integers don't include something with a fraction or a decimal in them, but they may be positive or negative. Rational numbers. I like you to look at the word rational and say, hey, what's the root word of rational? You can see that ratio is the root word of rational. I'll give you the technical definition for rational numbers, and then I'll try to explain it in a way that makes a little sense. Okay, rational numbers, they're any number that can be written as a quotient of two integers. Remember from your first lesson that the word quotient means to divide. I like to think of this, it's any number that you can write as a fraction. If you have an integer over an integer like 3 fourths, negative 6 sevenths, etc. Numbers that can be written as a quotient of two integers or can be written as a fraction, these are called rational numbers. So 2.4, 1 half, negative 6, that could be like negative 6 over 1. 0 0.45, you could write that as 9 twentieths or negative 3 fourths. Um, most people do a little better when they look at the decimal form of a number. If a number is rational, it always does one of two things. It either terminates, so think about Arnold Schwarzenegger or something, the terminator, he ends people's lives. So the word terminate means ends, end, or repeat. So your number is always going to end or repeat here. Okay, what goes along with rational numbers? Often if there's something that is rational, we call, we know there's going to be an opposite there. There are irrational numbers. Irrational, if you've ever heard someone say, hey, you're irrational, they usually say you don't make sense. Okay, irrational numbers, when they were first discovered, people thought, those numbers don't make a lot of sense. Irrational numbers, they're those numbers that when you write them as a decimal, um, they end up going on forever and ever and ever, and they never end, and they never repeat. So as a decimal, an irrational number neither terminates nor repeats. You can't write it as a quotient of two integers. Some famous examples are pi, square root of 2. If you see this number, 1.211, 3111, 4111, you're going to see that that doesn't actually have a repeating pattern. It has a cool pattern, but it doesn't repeat over and over again. If you're a number and you write it as a decimal, it never ends, it never repeats, that's an irrational number. Okay, let's look at a chart. This chart I love because you can kind of see how the numbers fit together. So I like to start out in the middle of this chart. I have a natural number. Okay, natural numbers, remember those are counting numbers, so something like 2, 5, 310. These are all some natural numbers. Whole numbers, everything that's in this first category, natural numbers, it's also a whole numbers, but whole numbers also include a little more. So whole numbers also include just zero. But anything that was natural, you know, like 2, 5, 3, 10, 1, 15, those are all whole numbers. 
When you move up out in the box to integers, you'll see everything that's inside it, natural numbers and whole numbers, that's also an integer. But integers might have negative numbers too, as long as they're opposites of whole numbers and they don't have fractions or decimals. So we might have like negative 5, negative 14, also anything that we've seen before like 0, 2, etc. Those are all integers. Okay, then we come to rational numbers. In rational numbers, it includes all those numbers you've seen before, but it also includes fractions and decimals, um, numbers that either end or repeat when you write them out as a decimal. So I might say three-fifths, um, negative two-thirds, 5.7 repeating, and then anything we've seen before, so like negative five, zero, eight. Okay, those are all rational numbers. And then in its own little separate category is irrational numbers over here to the right. Anything that's in one of the other categories, it's not an irrational number. Because irrational numbers, they never end or repeat. Pi, that's a good one. Square root of 5, negative square root 17. These are all irrational numbers. If you find their decimal form, they keep going on forever and ever. Everything that's on this chart is a real number. Okay, let's look at some examples. Okay, very common, you're going to be given a number and I want you to figure out all the sets of numbers it belongs to. So you have to think, is it natural, whole, integer, rational, irrational? They'll all be real, so I probably won't make you write that. So our first number here is negative 13. I like to think, what's the most restricting category it goes to? A negative 13, it's the opposite of a whole number, so I know it's an integer. And everything that's an integer is also a rational number because it's a little subset of that. It's going to be real. I won't make you write that. It's negative, so it's not whole or natural. And it stops, so it's not irrational. So integer and rational are all the categories that negative 13 belongs to. Okay, if we look at 3.28, you're going to notice it's not a whole number or it's opposite. So it's not whole, natural, or an integer. It's a decimal, it stops, so we know that's a rational number. That's the only category that this one belongs to other than real. Okay, our next example is 54. 54 is going to fit in a lot of categories because when you count, you say the number 54. That means 54 is a natural number. If it's a natural, it's also whole. If it's whole, it's also an integer. And if it's an integer, it's also a rational number. So this one fits into four categories. Okay. Then the last example, square root of 5, if you're not sure about it, you can try it on your calculator. When I push, punch that into my calculator, I get about 2.236067, dot, dot, dot. Lots of numbers coming up there. I'm going to notice that it fills up my whole calculator screen. It doesn't end. It doesn't repeat. This is a classic example of an irrational number. If it's irrational, it's not going to fit into any of your other categories. Okay. This type of question is a little bit different. You might have to see which set of numbers is most reasonable for each situation. So this time, I just want the most specific set that applies. Okay. The number of pennies in a wallet. Think about this a little. You might want to pause it so you're getting your own mind in gear and then come back and see what I have to say. Okay, when I think about a number of pennies in a wallet, I might think, well, I might be completely broke and have no pennies in my wallet, or I might have one, I might have 50 pennies, I might have three pennies, but I'm not gonna have three and a half pennies or anything like that. So it seems like I am going, I could, since I could have zero or any counting number, I'm gonna say that the whole numbers are the most reasonable for number of pennies in my wallet. Okay, your height. Think about this one too. Pause. Think. Okay, my height might be like five foot seven. It might be five foot seven and a half. Um, if I was doing this inches or centimeters, it might be, you know, it might have a decimal. It might have a fraction in it. But it's going to probably end, or it would start repeating. So I think that this, your height, could be a whole number, but it could be any rational number. 
So irrational numbers would be the most reasonable set of numbers for your height. Okay, let's look at one more little topic before, other than just classifying numbers. We're going to look at counterexamples. A counterexample is just any example that proves a statement false. So here's an example. Um, I am going to say this statement. All negative numbers are integers. And your job is to say if this statement is true or false. If it's false, you need to come up with a counterexample. Okay, so I want to think here, all negative numbers are integers. Is that true? So I might think of some numbers like negative 3. That seems to be an integer. Negative 5. Sure, but how about negative 2.68? That's a negative number, but it's not an integer because it's not a whole number or it's opposite. It has a little decimal in there. So I've come up with something one number that made this statement false. If you can come up with anything that makes it false, it's a false statement. My counterexample is negative 2.68 because it's negative but not an integer. Okay, so this is what I mean by a counterexample. Okay, here's this one. No irrational numbers are whole numbers. If you think back to that little chart we had, it's like whole numbers in here, and irrational was over there. Hope you can see that there's no inter like overlap there. They don't. If it's whole, it's not in the irrational category. If it's irrational, it's not in the whole category. So this is actually a true statement. No irrational numbers are whole numbers. If it's whole, it's going to be rational, not irrational. Okay, this one. The square root of a number is always less than the, than the original number. Try this one on your own for a second. Okay, I like you to always try several numbers. So you might try to think of something at first. Like maybe you thought square root of 16, hey, that's 4. Okay, well, there the square root's less than the original number. How about square root of 25? That's 5. Hmm, seems to be still happening. But when you're trying to come up with numbers, you need to get creative. Try to think of 0, 1. Maybe from some negative numbers and fractions. See if this always seems to be true. If I try the square root of 1, I get 1. Huh. Then the square root wasn't less than the original number. If I want to be really clever, I can say, hey, square root of 1 fourth. Hmm. That's 1 half. This time, the square root of the number is actually bigger than the original number. So because we've seen at least one example where the square root of the number is not less than the original number, we say this is false. If you're like 90% of the class, you probably use the counterexample that the square root of 1 equals 1, which is not smaller. Or you might have used the square root of 0 equals 0. You only have to actually come up with one counterexample. Okay, I look forward to working with you tomorrow in class and seeing if you can get these concepts to make sense. I encourage you to make some flashcards because the better you know this vocab, the easier it's all going to be. Thanks for watching.